Hello, Carl here with Sustainability Theory News. Today's video, we're going to be going over nine different plant lists for permaculture planting. It's several different websites, great resources if you're interested in planting a permaculture garden or starting a farm based on permaculture principles. First off, what is permaculture? It's permanent agriculture. Plants working together symbiotically so they are stronger than if they were planted separately in a monoculture, which is one type of plant. So it's a polyculture or many species. They take up as much or as little space as they can working together. So you got the main tree, one. Usually it's a fruit or nut tree. Then you got the sub canopy layers, the herbaceous layers, the ground layers, the ground cover like clover and whatnot, the vines that climb up trees like trellises. Almost every inch of space is used up, including the space underground. Without further ado, let's go to the first list, regenerative.com, seven parts of an apple tree guild. A plant guild is just a name for a group of plants working together. So with the apple tree is the center of this guild, then you have suppressors that help suppress some of the grass from getting around the apple tree, which would compete for water and nutrients. Some of the best suppressors are what are called spring bulbs like alums, chives, leeks, garlic, that sort of thing, even onions, they kind of drown out a lot of the weeds and the grasses, but they also go sort of dormant later in the year, so they won't take up valuable space above ground or water as well. Attractors, uh, they talk about dill, fennel, and coriander, which is basically, uh, they're not all perennials, but they can attract some great bugs, pollinators and predators repellers are what you'll use to repel pests or bugs that would damage your crop with apples nasturiums work really well but all sorts of different plants will repel bugs while some plants will attract the pests so whatever you're planting at the center of your guild that's what you're going to want to repel against find out what the natural pests are for it and plant crops that will repel that pest mulchers plants like comfrey and artichokes rhubarb that will take uh, really good nutrients from the soil and you can just chop and drop them let them just rot right there as a mulch so to help retain moisture in the soil accumulators are plants that have really deep roots uh, yarrow chicory dandelion they have nice deep tap roots generally so they go deep in the soil they pull those nutrients out deep in the soil and then you can use them as compost and they get those nutrients right back into your plants at the top of the ground. And fixers or nitrogen fixers, they're legumes, so they take nitrogen from the atmosphere, work with a beneficial bacteria, and then fix that nitrogen in the soil so other plants can benefit from it. So that's regenerative. Let's go to Permaculture Research Institute. I have a couple of lists from them. First up, the centerpiece again, fruit or nut trees that's what's going to go right in the middle the seconds the second layer the understory trees pawpaws and whatnot they and they talk about papaya hazelnut dwarf apple guava coffee all these work well in shade and they don't grow too tall and talks about dwarf apple most uh, fruit trees have dwarf varieties or varieties that won't grow too tall so you can use them lifeblood these are the nitrogen fixers they got a pretty good list right here the pigeon pea ice cream bean cyperian pea uh, there's all sorts of other ones like the princess tree all sorts of beans and whatnot the accumulators again the bio accumulators they had the deep roots and then you got the borage comfrey chickweed yarrow chicory amaranth all sorts of different ones mulberry which is a tree but it can grow back pretty quickly and it's got great deep roots. The ground cover, the uh, clover is a nitrogen fixer, works really well. Sweet potato, sweet potato is perennial in warmer environments. They uh, talk about peanuts, ground nuts, squash, strawberries, pretty great ground cover. Mint is also pretty good, which brings us to the, the next layer, the pest repellers, mint, peppermint, basil, dill, also uh, garlic and chives. While they are not really a ground cover, they're the, more of a spring bulb, they will repel those pests. <clears throat> and let's go to the next list at Permaculture Research Institute. Just a simple chart for different plants. You've got the plant listed here, the plants that it likes, and the plants that it dislikes. So plants that it will not grow well with. Either they uh, just have competing root structures, uh, maybe the above ground, the aerial parts can shade each other out. 
maybe they repel the wrong kind of bugs to it. So that's a good list. Again, the links for all these pages will be in the description if you want to read more about them. These websites are some great resources. Again, with the Permaculture Research Institute, they have a companion planting guide. It's a convenient PDF that I have printed out. On the left-hand side, some natural insect repellent tips. So look at your farm, look at your garden, see what pests you have a problem with normally, and then plant some of these plants to help repel those bugs. And then, of course, if you have a plant, most of these are uh, annuals, not perennials, but some of them are, like grapevines a perennial. And it really only grows well with uh, mulberry trees and, uh, what is that, uh, tomato and yarrow. And I tell you, I see a lot of uh, wild grapes near mulberry trees, that's for sure. All right, now we're at Temperate Climate Permaculture, one of my favorite permaculture resources. That's where we got the graphic that I opened the video with. But it talks about each layer separately, the canopy layer, all the different trees you can use for the canopy layer, the subcanopy layer. Some of these pages or some of these plants are links to separate pages where you can learn more about that individual plant as well. Shrub layer, herbaceous layer, ground cover layer, it goes through all the different layers for you step by step. And I don't think they have a nitrogen fixing layer here, but a lot of these are nitrogen fixers as well. And that is very, very important. All right, so we're at exploringpermaculture.blogspot.com. Just a quick list of different annual permaculture guilds. Now it's not permanent, but things like peas and spinach and fennel, they all work really well together. Then you got your peppers and onions and lettuce and amaranth. Now you just want to make sure you have different families of plants, like group four, tomato and basil. Those are great companion crops, but you're not going to see another nightshade necessarily in this group, like a uh, pepper or a potato, because then it might bring in more diseases that the plants are susceptible to. Now they got several different groups here. Again, the link will be in the description. We're at midwestpermaculture.com. This is a link to their free ebook on plant guilds. I just printed up this book as well. It is very helpful. And it's got some pretty decent graphics as well. We'll just go down to the Ash Tree uh, Guild. Talks about the spring bulbs on the outside, gooseberries or currants, uh, dwarf or semi-dwarf fruit trees around the ash, and ash is a pretty tall tree. Now, not really edible parts to the ash tree. I think the seeds might be edible, but morel mushrooms love ash trees as well as elms. And morels can be a great food source for you, as well as a profitable venture but it's not very reliable so you might as well as hedge your bets with some additional plants around the ash tree raspberries strawberries dill parsley that sort of thing it's a pretty decent put together guide it's got i think nine different guilds that it works with so that's a good resource and we're where are we at gaia creations eco land up block spot now this is if you want to create your own guild list because not every piece of land there's no two pieces of land that are identical. They all have their unique needs. So not every plant's going to grow well there. So first up is the spreadsheet. Make sort of a plant matrix. <clears throat> you want to know what their preferences are for light, water, and soil. I like the way this is laid out here. And they have different tables here. The habitat. What's it like? What are the root habits? I mean, how does it grow? The... Uh, the height, the width. That way you can space them out correctly. And of course there's more here. The, uh, oh, my mistake. Now, is it edible? What parts are edible? Is it medicinal? Is it a nitrogen fixer or a legume in other words? Is it a dynamic accumulator? Meaning it does have deep roots that pulls those minerals out of the deep soil. Does the wildlife love it? Is it a shelter for invertebrates, you know, beneficial insects? Is it a nectary, meaning when does the flowering happen? You want to space out your flowering so your bees always have a source of food or the natural pollinators stick around to pollinate all your crops. The last one they have is how far does it spread? Is it a ground cover? How tall is it? In other words, are there any poisonous parts? Because, yeah, there are some plants where a lot of the parts are edible, but some parts are poisonous. The only things I would add to this are what are the natural pests to it. What are the natural enemies of these plants? So you can plan the natural repellers around that. And also harvest time. When are these plants going to be ready for harvest? That way you can design your permaculture uh, farm. If it's a real big farm, you don't want to have to be 
picking apples over here while you have different harvests of herbs all the way on the other side of the farm. You kind of want to have them working together in the same area. That way you have less travel time, less time maintaining the crops as well. The last resource I'm going to have here, the Natural Capital Plant Database, created by a couple of different permaculture designers. Now, I have signed up for the free plant list, over 2,000 plants. I'm pretty sure I'm going to pay for the additional fee, though. Now, as you can see, there's lots of resources online for free, but this is done by permaculture designers, and they have over 2,000 plants already in their database, by far the largest permaculture list I've found, and they talk about how to work with different guilds, how they work together, and different types of polyculture plantings. So I'm interested in that. You know, I could, of course, work and create spreadsheets all on my own, and indeed I already have, and I have massive lists of plants that I want to plant on my farm but which work, which plants work best with each other. The research has been done by these people. I think I might pay the 40, 50 bucks a year for the premium researcher membership just because of that. Of course, you don't have to. There's all sorts of free resources and I will link to the ones that we've talked about in the video. Those will be linked in the description below. If you'd like to see more news headlines like this, subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.